In this lecture, we're going to look at the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae, as well as the sacrum and the coccyx. Now the thoracic vertebrae goes from T1 to T12. So there's 12 thoracic vertebrae. And uh, they're going to have a larger and stronger body than we saw with the cervical. Also, how we're going to tell that this is a thoracic vertebrae is it's going to have longer transverse processes and a much longer spinous process. Also, we're going to have facets or demi facets on the body for the head of the rib. Now, I call these costal facets because, again, costal means rib. And so these are going to be costal facets. Now, if it's an entire facet, sure, we'd call it a costal facet. If it's a partial, then we would call it a costal demi facet. So demi facet is a partial facet. See how this is a partial one on this vertebrae up above is a partial. They come together to create a whole demi or a costal facet. Um, but um, again, we would call that a demi facet. Okay. So again, these are the costal facets because ribs attach to them. And this part, this, uh, this facet is where the head of the rib will attach. And then on the transverse process, this is where the tubercle of the rib will attach. And reviewing the parts again, we have the body, the pedicles, the lamina, and the pedicles and the lamina are going to make up the vertebral arch or neural arch. The lamina, again, laminates together to form the spinous process. Sticking out transversely are the transverse processes. We have the vertebral foramen. We have the superior and inferior, which is hard to see. Here's a little bit of it. Inferior articular processes. And again, the part of the articular process that has the hyaline cartilage attached to it is going to be the articular facet. So articular facet. And um, again, if it's the top one, it'll be the superior articular facet. If it's the bottom one, it'll be the inferior articular facet. And then we also have our costal facets and our um, whole costal facets or our demi facets. Okay. Now the lumbar vertebrae is going to be the strongest and largest. It's going to have short, thick spinous process in transverse process. And this allows for the back musculature to be attached. So looking at the parts, we have the body, we have the vertebral foramen, we have the transverse foramen, which again is going to be a bit shorter. We have the lamina, we have the spinous process, we have the superior and inferior vertebral notch. And that goes along with the uh, thoracic vertebrae that I showed a moment ago. We have the intervertebral frame. And if we stack these together, otherwise it's just the notch. And we have another area too, that we find kind of in this area here. And this is going to be called the pars interarticularis. Okay. So the pars interarticularis. But when we're looking at the lumbar vertebrae, how are we going to tell it from, from the others? Well, again, it's going to have the squared off spinous process, which is going to be a bit shorter. And the transverse process is also shorter. And as it says here about the back muscles, here's what I want you to think about. If you've ever had a steak like this, this is a porterhouse steak uh, or, or a T-bone. Well, this is a half of a vertebrae. 
This right here is the body. So the body. This right here is the vertebral foramen. Vertebral foramen. This right here is the transverse process. So here's the transverse process. Here we have the lamina. There's the lamina. And here we have the spinous process. So the spinous process. What's hard to see in this picture, and it would be right here, is going to be the pedicles. Okay, so the pedicles. So there you go. You can grocery shop and study for anatomy at the same time. Okay, let's take a look at an x-ray of a lumbar. X-ray of a lumbar, we have our lateral. And this is a good one for seeing the intervertebral foramen. Also good for checking out disc height. Then we have our AP, and with the AP we're looking for what's called a winking owl. Okay, that's one thing we scan for. What that means is, well first of all look at this, see how it looks like it has a beak and it has eyes, and here this one the mouth looks open, here's a beak with eyes, again a beak with eyes. That's why they call us a uh, kind of an owl. But if we see what's called a winking owl, that means one of these eyes are missing. So what are the eyes? Well, first of all, the eyes are the pedicles. The square part here, okay, the head, is going to be the body of the vertebrae. We can see right here and here are the transverse processes. They're a little more of a shadow. And this right here would be a spinous process. This right here is an inferior articular process. This right here is a superior articular process. So on this one vertebrae, we see the superior articular process, the body, the pedicles, comes down, here's the inferior articular process, and the spinous process. So hopefully you're able to see that. Now going back to that winking owl, what that means is the pedicle is missing. So it looks like it's missing an eye. Why that's significant is because that usually indicates metastatic disease. In other words, cancer that is spread to the spine and has replaced the bone tissue with tumor tissue. And so one of these pedicles is missing. So just as a habit, the radiologist, when they put the x-ray up, will just check to make sure all the pedicles are there, all the parts are there, and then they'll go on to look for other abnormalities. By the way, on this x-ray, if you're wondering what all of this stuff is, these are intestines, so this is gas within the intestines. Now there's one more that we do with this. Usually we do an AP, AP, and a lateral, lateral, but with the lumbars, we do one more, because remember I talked about the pars inter articularis? Well, we do an oblique view. And on the oblique view, we look for what's called a Scotty dog. Okay, so a Scotty dog. And it's this area right in here that is what we call the pars interarticularis. So the top ear is going to be the superior articular process. The eye is a pedicle. The nose is a transverse process. This front leg is what we call the zygapophyseal joint. Okay, it's the inferior articular process. Um, that hooking up with the superior articular process 
of this vertebrae is that zygapophyseal joint, or Z joint. But anyway, the, the front leg is the inferior articular process. The back leg, remember the spinous process angles downward, so the back leg is the spinous process. And then the lamina is kind of in between. Okay, so what we look for on this is to see whether the Scotty dog has a collar. In other words, if there's a black line going through this, um, this dog's neck, or if there's a separation at the, the neck, again, looking like it has a collar, then that means that pars interarticularis is broke. And we call it a spondylolisthesis. Okay, spondylolisthesis. And if it occurs on both sides, then the posterior elements of the vertebrae can actually shift away from the anterior portions. Now, this is kind of common among, like, dead weight lifters. People that lift really heavy weights can actually cause this to shear uh, just because of the stress on those vertebrae. And depending on the degree of spondylo, um, either nothing might be done, precautions might be taken, or surgery might be required in order to put those pieces back together. Okay, looking at the sacrum now. The sacrum, again, is the union of five vertebrae. And again, we count them S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. And they typically are fused by age 30. Some parts, we have the median sacral crest, which is analogous to the spinous processes. We have the sacral ala, which is fused transverse process. So that's this right here. And uh, the sacral canal ends at what's called the sacral hiatus. So here's the sacral hiatus. And some other um, parts are going to be not only the median sacral crest, but the lateral sacral crests. We have the posterior sacral foramen. Again, posterior sacral foramen is an individual. If I'm talking about them collectively, the posterior sacral foramina. This is the superior articular process with the superior articular facet on the end. Here you can see the process a little better. We have the sacral promontory. Now, if this vertebrae, or I should say the sacrum, is turned sideways, we'll see that this promontory sticks out. It's prominent. And here's the base of the sacrum. And the articular surface, or I should say auricular surface, um, is in the shape of an ear. That's why we call it auricular. Oracle means ear. So this auricular surface is going to hook up with the auricular surface of the um, ilium. And that's going to give us our sacroiliac joint. Now this is what it looks like on x-ray. And uh, it almost looks like a shield. Now it's a little bit distorted when we take this x-ray just because we have to tilt the, the x-ray tube downward on an angle in order to get through the pelvis and take this picture. So it distorts it and makes it look a little bit longer and larger than it really is. And again, here's our, our sacroiliac joint right in here. Sacroiliac joint. And now the coccyx, your tailbone, it's a union of four vertebrae, and it goes from CO1 down to CO4, 
And again, this should fuse by age 30. Now, caudal epidural anesthesia during delivery is sometimes um, introduced into the sacral hiatus. And uh, that's going to anesthetize the sacral and coccygeal nerves. And then the sacral and coccygeal cornu are often used as landmarks to find this. So that's one thing I didn't mention on the um, sacrum is there are sacral cornu. Remember cornu means horn. So sacral cornu. And then on the coccyx, there's coccygeal cornu. So that's coccygeal cornu. And then we can also see a transverse process as well.